Good Tuesday morning, guys. My name is Jerry Miller, and welcome to Real Talk. This an insider's guide to real estate, life, and the pursuit of happiness. It's presented by the Yes Team Realtors, Keith and Jonas Smith, trusted advisors in this real estate game and the game we call life. Guys, we're live in Charlottesville, Central Virginia, the Commonwealth, the country, and the world on the I Love Seville Network. We have Mr. Greg Wells, the second generation owner of a four generation company, Interstate Pest and Service Companies. Under his watch and under his vision, he really exploded this company into what it is today. We will welcome him in T minus three, four minutes to the show. Before we do, Judah Wickhauer, our director, let's go to the studio camera and welcome a friend, um, uh, a trusted advisor, the star of our show, the distinguished gentleman in Keith Smith. I gotta say, you look a bit dapper today. Thank you. I like that. Since that. you've uh, arrived on the uh, I Love Seville scene with your uh, je ne sais quoi for fashion, I've had to uh, keep up. It's almost a uh, keeping up with the Smiths, if you may. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you missed your calling. You should have been a comedian. I, I'm telling the truth. Well, it not really. It's the fashion. Not really. <laughs> What's going on, my friend? Yeah, so uh, I'm excited to talk to Greg ab ab about Interstate and, and what they can do to help uh, us in the real estate space, and particularly his thoughts on this HB 1266, which is the new state inspection. You know, I, I, I suspect what we're going to hear is what we typically hear when the state makes passes these lovely laws is there's a lack of clarity. And then guys like Greg and real estate agents and the market starts fine tuning it. So I'm pretty excited to hear about his thoughts, thoughts on that. And, um, and then we, we talked about this on Friday. We were going to do a quick check in on the, how the open house went on. Sunday uh, went great. We had 10 couples come through. We followed all the protocols. Um, zero folks had a complaint about it. Um, you know, it just worked out really good. We had a couple of situations where there was more than one couple that wanted to go in the house, and unfortunately, it was 100 degrees. And, right. But they sat in their car with their AC while I was outside sweating, and I texted them, and uh, I lost a few pounds. That was a good thing. There you go. Annie's riding the bike around yeah. Lake Monticello, yep. um, doing a 15-mile bike ride Keith did this morning around yep. the lake. Uh, he was the he had the third open house that we know of since COVID nineteen mm -hmm. in Cascadia in Cascadia, Cascadia. this mm -hmm. past weekend. Mm -hmm. We're going to have it again on Sunday. Yeah, and then we've got a second one at, at uh, a one in Profit Ridge. So we'll at John Kerber's house. That's exactly right. So we're going to talk about that on Friday, and uh, and then uh, you know at the back after the show, after after Greg chats with us, we're going to talk a little bit set up for Friday show. You know why. Uh, why rent when you can own? So we'll talk a little bit about that. Why rent when you can own in the back half of the show? And on Friday, we have folks from Long and Foster watching, hey. folks from Real Estate 3, from Nest Realty watching right now. Um, it's all Greg. It ain't me. I, I'll tell you what. <laughs> should we welcome him now? Yeah, please. Um, we're going to get Mr. Greg Wells on the line, Judah Wickhauer. I'm going to reach out to him. I really am glad that you're following this because a lot of folks in the space, your colleagues, have sure. a lot of questions. Yeah, so what, I, what I'm hoping to happen today after you know Greg introduces himself and tells him about the awesome stuff that Interstate does for us here in our region, um, which is a pretty large region footprint. Actually, they're in Richmond too, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, Much of the Commonwealth, in they, fact. There you go. Um, I'm sure we're going to get a bunch of questions off the feed, so we'll have to bounce them past them. Yeah, we'll give it a like, give it a share. We have them on the line. And Judah, if you can do me a favor, give me a thumbs up when we can mm -hmm. welcome Mr. Wells to the show. Um, okay, we have Mr. Wells on the line. Greg, you are live um, for Charlottesville, the Commonwealth and the country here. You are live on um, Real Talk. Before we get into the nitty gritty, um, how about an introduction, sir, to you and your company? Okay, uh, thank you, Jerry. Uh, and Keith, uh, I'm Greg Wells, uh, owner of Interstate Pest Control here in Charlottesville. Uh, I think uh, Jerry's already mentioned um, the multiple generations of our company. Um, I guess I've been running the company since the early to mid 90s now. Um, we also have Valley Termite and Pest Control, which is located out of technically out of Stanton, and they work up and down 81 pretty much from uh, Lexington up to the Harrisonburg area. And we have been around since 1969. So been here a while this man made the company explode four generations of family now running it and keith smith on the show here. hey greg how's it going man i uh, very well yourself i heard i heard you and i like to talk a lot it's from a mutual friend so i think i, I think we're in trouble 
Yeah, you know, but one thing I can say that's po- uh, probably true, but yet uh, Jerry knows how I am in front of cameras and things, so he knows that won't be a problem. <laughs> there you go. Well, the, my goal is is that you get comfortable enough that we look at our watch and go, oh, we just burnt a half an hour. So That'll probably happen, yes. So, yes. so thank you for doing this. As you know, um, there's a lot of questions about this, and we'll just kind of get into this um, HB 1266, which is this new state inspection thing. And uh, a little bit of background about myself. You know, I work in a bunch of, uh, of, of situations where I work with the local governments and state governments. Okay. And this is very classic of them that they come up with this little blurb. I mean, it's like next to nothing as far as, you know, you now need to do this. And then they don't give us any direction. They don't give us Correct. any. So it's up to us, right? Up to us practitioners, mm-hmm. up, up to your company to do that. So um, if you could just tell us a little bit about, you know, from your perspective, the genesis of this and and what your company is doing to provide service to us real estate agents and folks out in the field. Sure. The um, way it kind of started with us was we got, we got calls from uh, numerous realtors directly to our office asking us, what are you going to do? And first of all, we didn't know anything about it. So, you know, I finally uh, got involved and started doing some research on it. And um, I think Reese Bailey, who it was, Reese uh, sent me like, actually a copy of the legislation. And I did some research at that point. And what I thought is exactly what you just said, Keith, was the fact that if you read it, it is so vague uh, number one, it, it, you're not even sure what they're asking for 100 percent. Then it t- gives you no reference as to how you get what they're telling you, you need. So anyway, make a long story short, we ended up doing it, it, all the digging we could. We got online and started reaching out to people. I even reached out to other pest control companies in other areas of the state. It was interesting that almost all of them hadn't even heard of it. So I was the one telling them this is what's happening. And, uh, you know, nobody knew a thing about it. Uh, the realtors were the same way. I reached out to Carr, and they didn't know anything. You know, they had no answers. So, make a long story short, here we ended up uh, digging through different training uh, locations and uh, companies that did the training in this kind of a field. And we did finally find found someone, which that was interesting how that played out for me too, because uh, I was emailing with this uh, lady who was very helpful, and she was having to go to her bosses. Hmm. They work all over the country. And she was going to all of her bosses saying, here's what Virginia has. I sent them a copy of the, the, the legislation. And so she took it to her boss and, and they were trying to help me say, OK, how can we make this work? So we went through all of that process. And, uh, you know, so make a long story short, we've now uh, I've sent three of my men through a six hour training class and, and they've been tested and all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, we're hopeful that we've answered what they want. And that's where I'm going to answer that. We are hopeful that we have. Yeah, so um, I apologize as as from from a, as a citizen that that the state just did not do this right. But I, on the other hand, Greg, this is so typical. Um, we see yes. this all the time, you know, and then they dump it on us to figure it out. So my hat's off to you for getting in front of it. I made a note. Uh, one of the things that uh, I have a bit of a volaholic problem. So I, I sit on a bunch of boards and commissions, and one of them is the Thomas Jefferson Planning District Commission. And we have a liaison uh, officer that actually works with Richmond. So we're, we're going to tr- try to figure out a better way to get this stuff out to folks because it was in the works long before July 1, right? It was, we probably, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we probably had one to two months to prepare for this, but everybody didn't really realize it up until a, a week or so before July 1. So thank you for doing that. So the short answer is you pick up the phone, real estate agents, and you can now call Interstate Pest Control and Service Company, and they can handle all three inspections for you, right? Your water, yeah. your termite, mm-hmm. and just like we used to do. You guys are now licensed to do that. Yeah. We, yes. And, and I don't know if license is the correct word. Let's use the word accredited because okay. that's the word the state's using. Sure. And uh, again, if you, if you look up definitions of that, it. it well, let's it, not it, go it, there. Let's not go I there. Know, I know. <laughs> so so uh, I've done all of that. Trust me. But uh, we are accredited yeah. uh, to do the septic inspections now at, at this point. Yes. So the short answer is give give Greg a call. He'll hook you up. Right, that's correct, and and, that, that and, and that's the important part of it because as we started talking about this, 
almost a week ago, right? Yep, about 10 days ago. That, um, you know, this had the, in, the possibility of delaying closing substantially if we couldn't find mm -hmm. a company like yours that would actually be able to do, as I referred to it, as the trifecta and, and get it done. Yes. Well, and that's, you know, you know, we've had such a relationship with the real estate world forever. My sure. father started that back in the 60s and, and uh, we've evolved it from just doing termite inspections and I, my group came along and we, we expanded out and basically because of requests from realtors. We expanded out into the, doing the water testing and then doing the septic and that kind of thing. So that's kind of how that all evolved. And what was happening with this septic situation where they were in panic mode, realtors were calling up saying, how are we going to close deals? Or, or you know, or we, do we have to call septic companies now that do the pumping? Are they, are they going to give us anything? Can they give us what you want? So we're getting all of that kind of stuff. So there was a little bit of a panic setting in amongst the real estate, the realtors, I felt. Yeah, so I, I, hopefully between what Jerry's doing in this show and this what, what we're doing now, we can basically calm that down. There is a trusted advisor that you can get this done and um, give him a call. W one other thing I wanted to touch off of, um, and, and maybe some other real estate agents don't know that, maybe the general public doesn't know this, but you guys have you guys have a service division, right? So if I am doing a home inspection and I have a list, I can just pick up the phone and call you guys and say, "Hey, go fix it." You know, give us a quote, of course, and the client approves it. Can you talk a little bit about that service? Yeah, and, and let me give you a little quick background how that even happened, real quick. I, you, you said I like to talk, so no, we're, we're, we're two talkers. So <laughs> Jerry's over here getting nervous. <laughs> Um, uh, for any of you longtime realtors, uh, you, you know the name Charlotte Ramsey. Sure. Um, Charlotte, um, you know, she's passing out, of course. Uh, but anyway, um, many, many years ago, uh, when I had kind of just was getting my hands in the company legitimately and was making a lot of the decisions, she kept coming to me and saying, you know, Greg, uh, that all came about because of mold. She, she, Charlotte would tell me, say, Greg, um, I'm getting more mold requests. At that time, home inspe remember, home inspectors weren't even checking all the homes at one time. That was that's a newer sure. you know thing too. And uh, but uh, Charlotte kept reaching out to me and talking about the fact that you know I, I've got this house. I think it's some mold in it. Can you help me? Well, initially I thought so. We don't really do mold, but I'll I'll help you. And so I started researching on my own a little bit and and make a long story short, yeah, I, I became kind of the untrained, uneducated expert in mold. Well, that kept happening. So then I finally figured out, I said, look, if we're going to do this mold thing, we got to learn what we're doing and get educated and, and be proper. So I went ahead and went to the, uh, I reached out to Joel Loving, if you guys yeah, know Joel, sure. who does a lot of testing and all in that world. Uh, and Joel told me that um, the IAQA was the, like the, the name brand as far as mold certifications. So anyway, I went to Florida and spent a week down there, which that was awful. I'd have to go to Florida for a week. But anyway, <laughs> well, hold it. What <laughs> month did you go to Florida in? It was in Tampa. No, what month? So. What month? Oh, oh, no, I'm talking, I'm talking many No, years no, no. Ago. What, what month were you in ago. Florida? Oh, I got you. I got you. Um, it was, I think, I'm trying to think what month. It was either spring or summer. Uh, so it was, it was okay. It was good. Nice weather. I'll let you finish. Bad. I'm sorry. Okay, that's no problem. Uh, so anyway, I went down there and went through a week's training. And uh, I mean, that's hands on. It's, you know, the book, the, whole, the instructors, the whole nine yards. And we were tested and I passed that and got my certification. So at that point, we decided to start the service company. And I, and the reason I did it is I wanted the mold due to liability issues. I wanted it removed from my pest control company. So I, I started its own corporation and started doing mold remediation. And then that led to the repair side um, because a lot of the competition that was doing mold was going out and they would tear out, you know, if you had a leaky toilet or something and you had mold in a wall, they would tear out your drywall and remediate your mold and leave you a hole in your wall. And I decided we want to be more complete than that. So uh, we ended up uh, opening up the service company. And then I know I got too many irons in the fire at times, I guess, but then I went ahead and uh, took, went studied and took the the uh, contractors uh, exam and so I'm, we're class A contractors so that's kind of how the service thing popped up it was the fact that Charlotte Ramsey pushed me on mold I decided to take care of that and the real estate world you know, needed that so I went ahead and got the mold certifications and then to, to be really complete in that industry we wanted to do the fix up part of it too so then that kind of fed out and now we've got like 16 people in the service company that do nothing but mold repair work and etc so it just kind of fed on itself 
So your your catchphrase is it's a home's best friend. Tagline. Tagline. Yeah. Excuse me. A home best yes. friend and a realtor's best friend, because we you know, try to be honestly. Yes. Because you know we get I get this all the time. So I'm a recovering builder and developer, right? So I have a class A and and all this stuff, and I get uh -huh. phone calls all the time from realtors. Hey, I need this done right and mm -hmm. and you guys are a one complete package right you can it's full service full service there you go yes we try to be yes sir there you go oh, don't call me sir <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I was i was a staff sergeant in united states marine corps don't call me sir <laughs> Um, I apologize. There you, there you go. There you go. So I'm going to hand you over yeah. to, to, to my cohort here. There may be some questions on the feed, and then I'll catch you on the back end. We do, we do have some okay. questions, Mr. Wells, for you. How about this? And I was watching um, you uh, do an interview with NBC29 um, when we were talking about your commitment to your team members, um, especially in this mm -hmm. time during COVID. Um, how about yes, how, how your company has managed this? Because you guys have done a tremendous job with this. Well, first off, we are considered an essential industry, which um, I know a lot of, and, and, and through the business world, I know a lot of people that have suffered greatly through this, and we've been very fortunate. Uh, we've been able to operate, uh, yes, this cost me some money too, like everybody else, but I can't complain, in all honesty. Uh, we're able to do probably 80, 90% of our normal workload. So what we did is we changed the way we do things. Um, Obviously, the, the, the normal, the PPEs as far as the mask and the gloves and the booties and tie-back suits even when necessary and those kind of things, uh, we do all of that. Um, but we even changed how our men operate as far as uh, we're more mobile now. And that's actually working out pretty well. We're learning ourselves through this. It's a learning experience for us. But uh, my, my, my guys... Uh, and, and all they they don't come into the office every day. Usually, where everybody met in the office at eight o'clock, and then they all dispersed and went out and did their thing for the day, and then came back in at five and went home. Well, we allow most of the vehicles to go home now. We send out uh, most of their work orders are done mobily, and so, uh, through, you know, so therefore they don't have to come into the office. We don't congregate as a group, and it allows us to communicate but, and, and stay and stay operational, but yet less risk for both us and our customer base. Um, guys, I saw firsthand his commitment to his team members, and if the if the owner of the company is so strongly committed to the health of his team members, imagine what he's like with his paying customers. Um, so I think it says a lot of Mr. Wells and the leadership he shows with his business. How about the community in Charlottesville and Central Virginia to you? I mean, this is not just a place you run your business. I mean, this is someone a place you're, you're proud to call home. Yes. Uh yeah, yeah, very much so. And, and you know, the community itself, um, it, as far as our business is concerned, I feel like most of the most of the communities work hand in hand with us on this. Uh, uh, you know, we again, we look out for them and they look out for us. And and, you know, so I don't I mean, I, I feel like that uh, that's going very well. How about uh, Mr. Wells having the uh, family in there? I mean, you got your uh, you get your grandchildren in your commercial. You get to go to work with your son and your daughters. Um, I'm sure it's not always roses. Pray for me, Jerry. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's not roses every day. But I mean, I'm just kidding. so many people would want to work with their families if they could. Yes, and that's a uh, and let me, I'm gonna back up a little bit further and say my dad and I were the same way. Yeah, we have bumps like any family sure. would, but but it, it it's a blessing. Uh, and, uh, and, and I'm very proud of it. I'm proud my dad started. I'm proud I'm next. And, and the following generations, my children, uh, my, my grandson is not working there now, but he worked there for a while and he's kind of gone on done his own little thing now, which is fine. Uh, but, um, uh, he, I don't, just for my age, I don't have enough grandchildren quite ready to work yet. So that makes me feel a little bit younger, but, uh, but anyway, um, uh, no, that, that's been a blessing and, and, and we do make it work. Like I said, I'm not going to say there's never a bump, sure. but they're, 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 they're bumps we can handle. How about that? There you go. And Mr. Wells, you said, uh, I remember you mentioning to me one time that, uh, that your father, the, who started the company, he said that this could never really be a big company that employed a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And, and, and you, you gave it a lot of sweat equity and some vision and said, well, we can do this. And now look at you guys. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm going to take up the whole show on this quick story, but, um, Back in 1981, uh, I actually uh, left uh, Intrastate. Um, my I went to my dad. That was back in the day when if you made twenty twenty five thousand dollars a year, you were doing well. Uh, but anyway, um, 
I went to my dad because I had a job offer to go with, to work for an insurance company. And, uh, and it was one of the hardest things I've ever done. And he, he and I discussed it and he told me, he said, well, Greg, he said, I don't think this company will ever be able to support both families. So he recommended, and it was nothing, it was just, he was being sincere. He recommended that I take the other job. So make a long story short, I took the other job. I was there about 13 years. And then I came back to Interstate. I kind of had my hands in a little bit before that, but legitimately came back to Interstate. And now we're a company of 50 some people. Uh, and uh, one of the other things, as far as my dad's concerned, uh, a year or two before his death, we always have an annual Christmas party. And it, at our Christmas party, uh, we had it at the Elks Lodge and we had about a hundred or so people there counting spouses and things. And uh, and my dad looked at the group and he looked at me, he told me, he said, he said, man, if you'd have ever told me we would had this many people depending on us, their families depending on us to supply them jobs and incomes and that kind of thing. He just couldn't believe it. And he was so, you know, it was it was a really a moment I'll never forget. That's beautiful. I love that story. The question, this one from Long and Foster. Um, if we give a realtor for a closing, we give you a call. No. What are the mm -hmm. services? What are the services you guys can do to help a deal close? Well, obviously, we we do the termite water testing or well uh, and the septic inspection. I'm going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and 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 another big thing now has become the mold issues. Uh, we're certified mold remediators. And we're able, as Keith said, we're able to do repair work also. We're not home inspectors, but if you've got certain repairs you want done, or if you want something just looked at, if you've got a questionable deck and you want us to come look at it, we're capable of doing that kind of stuff. But we're not trying to cut into the home inspector world. We don't really do that. But uh, we can do, next, we can, in the repair world, we can do a little bit of everything in, in, in that side. One other thing I would like to say, just so the realtors know this, is my company has no one on commission. And I say that for this reason. Our industry is commission-based as a general rule, okay? Uh, none of my inspectors, most of the realtors, if they're watching this, they'll know Robbie Hawley. He's been with me forever doing inspections, and but I've got three or four guys that do it now. But Robbie's kind of our head guy in the inspection world. Uh, none of those guys are on, on commission. The only responsibility they have is to protect us from a liability standpoint. So when they come out to a home and tell you, you need to do A, B, and C, it's not because they're making a penny for t telling you A, B, and C. It's because legally you need to do A, B, and C. So uh, and I think that makes us a little different than some of the competition uh, because, a lot, like I said, a lot of the, uh, our industry is commission-based. That's a good, good, good knowledge right there. I'm going to pass it over to you that. here. I got one more for you. Mr. Wells, we are a, a platform of uh, hope and some positivity um, here. And how about managing... Um, just as a person and as a leader of the business, managing like that vulnerability and that fear that first hit when COVID was here. I remember when it first hit with my business, I was scared. Mm -hmm. I was not mm -hmm. sure what was going to happen. It was the uncertainty, Mr. Wells, mm -hmm. because as business owners and as leaders or CEOs, if we know we can plan until this date, we can manage the cash, we can manage the personnel. We just have to get there. We never knew that with COVID. Um, how about I throw, I throw that topic to you, and then if you could take it from a positive and, and hopeful standpoint for all the viewers that are watching. Okay. Um, ironically, uh, when COVID first hit, we had wind of it, but I mean legitimately hit. Um, I was in North Carolina. Um, I, have, uh, I have a house down there, and my wife and I had gone down to work on the house, which is what we do with that house. But anyway, we had gone down there to fix it up and, and repair and that kind of thing. And when I really get, when, my, when I really got rest grasp what we were dealing with, I told my wife Barbara. I said, "Look, I said we we got to go home." And so we left the Outer Banks and came home. And I had my my last company meeting that we've had since that time. I called all the employees in, and and in the meantime, I was working on a plan and what we were going to do, and doing my research and doing all that kind of stuff, and. Uh, so we had an entire company in Valley and uh, Charlottesville both. We got together. We tried to spread out. They were already talking about social distancing, but that was kind of just starting. And so we did try to be smart in that kind of regard. But yet we had a complete meeting uh, and set out our plan of uh, where we were going to go. Uh, and then I couldn't get back to the Outer Banks, just so you know, because they locked me out. But in, anyway, um, so, uh, you know, it. it, it it was a scary, it's, it was really scary uh, because, I mean, I'm sitting back thinking about, all right, number one, I got all these employees. Uh, they're all counting on a paycheck, okay? 
And in and, and our company, we do things where we have, we have we're bonus driven too. I do an end of the year and it's very substantial for our, for our employees. I do a bonus plan depending on how we do for the year. And I'm thinking about that. I'm thinking, well, that's, is this going to tear that all to pieces? So these, these people count on it. I mean, I know they do. They count on that December money. And so I got concerned about all that kind of stuff. I had no idea what was going to play out. None of us did. And like I said earlier in this interview, though, um, luckily, we are coming through it uh, as, as good as we could have hoped. I will say that. I mean, I mean, it's not perfect, but uh, I, I'm not, I'm not going to complain because we're lucky compared to most industries. We're lucky. I love that. I love that. So I've been sitting over here smiling as you've been talking to, to Jerry. A couple of things that that hit uh, hit hit home. Um, so the private sector in this COVID nineteen adapted real quickly. We had to, right? Mm-hmm. Your your industry adapted. Our industry adapted. Um, so right. that that was that was positive. We came up with protocols and 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 methods and methodologies so we can go ahead and do it. Why well, I was smiling so much. Um, so my wife and I have been working together we've been married since 1986 we've been working together since 1987 i also come from a family business we built and developed hundreds of hundreds of houses and so the question i have for you from one family business to another on sunday no business is allowed to be talked right when you guys get together for sunday is that the rule oh you, you sighed <laughs> oh you sighed i will say this we're not real bad about that. Um, in fact, once in a while, it'll come up, and one of us will somebody will say that. So, look, we're not talking shop, and and, and we'll move on because because I have eight grandchildren, and 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 we love them at my home, and when they're there, I don't want it to be about interstate. That's correct. Well, so I was the guy that always said that. I was the president of, of the companies at the time, and uh, and I would say, no, that's it. I kick them out of my house. You get out of my house. Yeah, we we yeah. are not talking business. And, 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 can be that way no doubt especially when you all your adult children are involved the same here all, i've my, got three kids and all three of my children are involved in business exactly i'm the oldest of five i had all my brothers and and my yeah. mother was um well i don't know what the pro i guess she was my assistant oh, your admin my admin assistant yeah. my mother so <laughs> who you know who really ran things right mr Yo, wells I, <laughs> my go, mother <laughs> my mother i know my mom was involved at one time too. So yeah, yeah, you know the too. feeling. So I, when you guys were talking, I had this big grin on my face, and and you know, <laughs> and the and the trick to it, and not, and you've got it, and it's clear because you're running it. Everybody needs to know their roles, right? Yes. And everybody yes. knows their roles and they need to stay in there and and respect each other is what those roles are. You know, absolutely, yes. absolutely. And we're all a bunch of Yankees, so that we have trouble with rules. So, so every <laughs> once in a while, we need to go ahead and keep them, keep them straight. And then, you know, for those and 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 I, my heart felt with you because those who have never actually employed tens upon tens upon tens of people the 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 weight that that has on your shoulder so my personal story in our in 2009 we lost 17 million dollars we lost we got caught up in that and lost everything yes absolutely I'm, yeah losing the money was not a big deal i made sure every single one of the people that worked with me found jobs before yeah we, we did yeah. everything that was my main my main my main my main focus and uh, you know uh, and, you, and you know keith you, the other thing you had to do is we, we had to massage some of our own employees sure. because they were freaking out sure you know so we had to walk through that gently too sure. and handle that the right way is because uh, so, you know most of my guys uh and and the girls in the office were all you know they were they were they were good with things but we had a few that were very skeptical and and, and very unsure sure. and so we we had to gently step through that so um, as a CEO or as an owner of a company, you're really just a grandfather, right? You're the dad, yeah. right? And, yeah. And, yeah. and your vision is trying to move the company along and all that stuff. And, but yeah, I mean, if somebody is uncomfortable, then you need to sit down and say, what can I do to help you? And I'm sure right. you've done that. I mean, I, I, yes. we may have met once or twice over the years, but this is the first time we spent some time together. And I know that much about you by just listening to you a few minutes that you'd sit people down and make sure they're comfortable before they move on. Yes, we're very pro. We try to be anyway. There yes. you go. So, can I talk a little technical stuff? Um, sure. So we're we, we, we're we're going to talk about this trifecta, right? Which is okay. So for those who are watching, who don't quite uh, are not real estate agents or are practitioner in it, in the contract we have to do three tests thirty days prior to closing. That's our well, 
our septic and our termite, right? So if those are over 30 days old, you got to redo it again. So I'm just was making some notes here. You have three men or three employees that can do the septic test. So we have some transactions coming up that we're going to, our transaction coordinator is going to send your way, right? How much lead time do you need now? Because, because, you know, it sounds like to me, you only really have three men that can do all the inspections. Uh, okay. Here, here's what I have three today. Okay. And I did that very quickly to be in front of this as, as the best we could. But I also have uh, one, two, three, four, potentially, actually probably five more that will be going through the process. Got it. Uh, now, that's not all over in Charlottesville. I'm, I'm going to have two more in, in the Valley. I, right now, I have one in the Valley that's ready. Sure. I have two in Charlottesville that are ready. And I'm going to get two more in the Valley, uh, the guys that do the inspections but haven't gone through the training for the septic yet. Sure. I have two more guys over there that I'm getting ready to send uh, to, to do that. And I've got a couple more in Charlottesville. So I will eventually have plenty of people. So the, 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 lead, the, the lead time really – will probably be, be be able to remain the same as it has been. Got it. Once we get our feet completely on the ground. Got it. I'm having to be a little careful now because I can't accidentally send the wrong inspector to do a septic, obviously. Understood. So I'm having to be a little in our office. We're handling it in our office right now. So just the way I we normally do it, because because of this 30-day window, if we're closing here, we try to call, you, call it in two weeks in advance. Two weeks should be mm -hmm. enough time, right? Is but yes, it, the uh, as much t as time as you can give. Let me tell you why. It's not because of the inspection process. It's if we have to do more. Let's say we do have to do some kind of a treatment, or we have to, especially uh, when you get into the mold world, because those yeah. mold jobs, if if it's done properly, those mold jobs are usually anywhere from let's say two to five days. So a, a job so, it, for a crew. So typically, that mold stuff gets caught at home inspection, which happens long before the back end of it. And so my note to myself is, we now need to do three weeks. That's our safety safety net because the thing is that, is we, that would be wonderful <laughs> yeah yeah yes. well but that only gives me one week of wiggle room right so from my perspective if the closing goes eight days over now i got to get you back in again so that's the reason yes. why we usually pick two weeks just unless, to unless they'll accept an updated uh, uh report and sometimes they will depends on who uh, who all's involved that's a got it okay uh, and, and you'll notice about our company that if you call me up on Thursday and tell me you're closing on Tuesday, somehow yeah, sure. we tend sure. to get you taken care of. I, yeah. Oh, and, and, yeah, we, we tend to make it. And Robbie Hawley, my inspector, I'm going to give Robbie some props because he's wonderful. If you called him up on Thursday and had to have it done Thursday night, he'll be there Thursday night. I'll yeah, say but, that straight up. So. But I'm just trying to be, because, you know, I'm, I'm, I come from the development building world, just to be respectful of your, yes. your time and your, you know. Well, and the market's turning. And the mark, and that's the thing we're going to talk mm -hmm. about in the back half of it. More, uh, more products coming online. More contracts are, are getting written. Yeah, so they're going to have more calls. Therefore, your your tempo is going to pick up. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's the fine. reason. That's the reason why I wanted to kind of have that conversation. You know, what do I need to tell my client care coordinator to reach out to you? So I'm going to tell the two right. to three weeks. Yeah, the Thursday Tuesday closing is not what we what we're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? But it does happen. What are you talking about? I, I, Isn't I, that well, the we've, gotten no call <laughs> we've gotten calls literally that are closing tomorrow? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, it, it, it just yeah. fell through the cracks, and, so. and and we tend to we tend to make it work if we can. Well, I'm smart enough to hire people that are smarter than me to go ahead and keep track of stuff. So we have a client care coordinator because, you know, my role is just to sit here and talk to him and, 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 fo and folks go. like you. So, One uh, more question for him and we'll get out of here. Yeah, yeah. So uh, okay. uh, Jerry, Jerry told me, he said, we, the two of us are going to get along well because yeah. we like to talk. He was right. One more question for you, Mr. Wells. you got a lot of folks watching here. This is just a, a question about Charlottesville and Central Virginia in general here. You're a former coach. Coach, you're a leader. You're a former baseball mm -hmm. coach. People look up mm -hmm. to you. You got a lot of folks watching here. How about a message to the community about uh, the rest of the year? Um, how about a, a little pep talk for all of us? Because Mr. Wells, we need it right now. Okay. Um, I would say number one, let's hope for UVA football. <laughs> no, um, it, with some fans, we'll see. Either way on that, I, I know it's what's important here. Obviously, obviously our health start. We had all starts there. We all know that. And uh, I'm making light of it, but uh, it's not a light thing. We all know that too. And 
you know, I think when this all started, we, uh, at least I, I wasn't certain as to how severe is this? You know, what, what is it really? And, uh, you know, and I, and, I, and I think I'm not without getting into the politics of anything, of course, it, it's we've gotten different, you know, different things said, different directions. And sometimes that's difficult. But, uh, you know, going forward, let's just pray that it gets it, it continues to get better. And if nothing else, uh, the, 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 the mortality rate improve, keeps improving and uh, people in the hospitals keep going down. And and, and what I and I, what I hope for in our community is all of our restaurants and and other businesses that have suffered can get active again and get going again and survive. Um, I mean, that, that, that's not just for me. That's for everybody. You know, that, that's the whole community. So. That was what I would say. Hey, Mr. Wells, you hit a grand slam this morning. Seriously. Thank you. Grand Greg, slam. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thank you, Keith. See you later, buddy. Much. We'll see you around, thank man. Thank you. Thank you. You have a good day. All right. Thank you all. Take care. Bye-bye. Uh, Mr. Greg Wells, guys, Interstate Pest and Service Companies, um, fantastic interview. Good family. This family cares so much about Charlottesville and Central Virginia. Well, you know, the... That's what small business, that, that is small business. That's what small business is about. And, and if you really take a hard look at what really runs this country, that is the engine of this yeah, country. Small business small is business. the backbone of the company, without, of the country. Without, without a doubt. So throw this to you here. Uh, how about a trusted advisor plug? Call last minute. Robbie's on there getting the job done. Yeah. You don't get that from something that's not local. No, and, and they're, they're relations people, the relationship people, the trusted advisor. You know, they, they do our three Bs that I talk about all the time. Be professional, they're professional. Be trustworthy, they're trustworthy. And be caring, and they care. You know, but, you know, we, we as, as practitioners in our end just need to get a little bit, you know, we need to give them a little bit of time. That's the reason I wanted to ask that question, you know, uh, with the number of, to give them time to grow their inspectors. You know, so I'm, I'll reach out to my client care coordinator and say, uh, let's give him a little bit more time. Bobby Gardner says, Intrastate is a phenomenal company. Bobby just left that uh, comment. Bashir, um, Bashir owns a restaurant on the Charlottesville yeah. downtown mall. Mm -hmm. Bashir says, a fantastic company, a fantastic family business. They are working on my house in Earliesville now. Intrastate, a job well done. That's from Bashir's on the downtown mall. Bob Shada said this about Intrastate. Thank you, Interstate, for your contribution to the Save the Fireworks Fund. This comment's coming in from Chris and Crozet. We use Interstate for, to help our house get ready for closing. I cannot recommend this company enough. We have more comments like this coming in on the feed from real estate agents. Pivot on you for a second. Sure, please. Bob, thanks, man. Yeah. That was, uh, I wonder, does anybody know how many folks actually watched it? Is there a way to determine that? I don't think that's going to be determinable because so many people watch from unknown locations. Yeah. What we are going to do on Thursday on this network on Barbara Lundgren's show, the Virginia Wedding and Event Showcase, is we're going to announce the official total that was raised through the cool. Charlottesville Fireworks Fund mm -hmm. and the money that we're giving to the Blue Ridge Area Food Bank through donations from companies like Interstate, Companies like Crutchfield, the State Farms. I mean, it was an amazing community effort. So I would like to, and if Bob is still listening, you know, after that, I think we need to pivot. I think it's something I'd like to showcase on this show. I think we ought to create, either extend that um, that raising of money or they've closed it. They closed it. Yeah, so let's start. It. Let's start a new one, mm -hmm. so we can raise some more money for the Blue Ridge. Let's okay. do this on the show. You we'll talk it. about this offline. Sounds good. Sounds good. Michael Guffrey, Chief Executive Officer, Roy Wheeler Realty Company, watching the program now. I want Hello, to give a Jeff shout out. Gaffney, welcome to the show. Give a shout out to Michael real quick. So um, we're going to put a feed in it. We're going to talk a little bit later in the show about why rent to own. But Michael and Roy Wheeler Realty are doing a Facebook Live on Thursday, and we'll make sure we drop in a feed. And maybe maybe Michael can do it into the feed. Give it a watch. You're going to get some good knowledge, and then we're going to we're going to continue that conversation on Friday on the show. One of the things that you mentioned prior to the program starting is the inventory coming on the market and the palpable buzz that that's out there when it oh, comes yeah. to real estate. Yeah, it, it seems in the last week or two, we've kind of predicted this, that um, that I think uh, I think you're starting to see some more activity, some more um, some more uh, listings come on a little bit on that. So um, I, I gave him a cheat sheet, folks. You did? I did, yeah. I did. So I just did a quick look from, from Friday to yesterday um, in that 25. I'm not going to use your cheat sheet. <laughs> 
Okay. Yeah. I went through all that trouble to print I, it. I and read it already. Uh, uh, it's got Photographic any, memory. Oh, yeah. That's a scary thought. Um, the um, 41 went active, uh, 48 went pending, and 16 sold. But if you break it down a little bit into it, um, Albemarle County, this is again, this is from Friday to, to yesterday. Uh, Albemarle County, 19 went active. Interesting, the medium list price was $499. Uh, 20 went went pending, five sold. So they're, they're kind of coming on, they're coming on and coming off, coming on and coming off. Uh, Seaville uh, actually got a little bit better. Five went active, uh, six went pending, and five sold. Um, so that was some good stuff. Fulvana seems to be the, 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 the pending rock star at the moment. You called this, I and know. you called this months ago. I know, I know. It's the price point. Yeah, right. Lake Monticello especially. Yeah, it's the price point. So, I mean, you're looking at a, a, a median uh, sales price in Albemarle of 520, Charlottesville 375. 375. Albemarle County medium sales price is 520,000. Again, that's just the, from those t from the Friday to, to what is closed yeah. between Friday and Monday. So, just a quick little snapshot. Sure. It's, it's not a long thing. But in Fulvana, it, it was uh, 225. 225. Uh, is so. Fluvanna, I mean, Fluvanna and Green might be the last truly affordable areas in, with when, when what, a 20 mile radius of Charlottesville? It's, it's Green actually um, had five active, two pending, so they're actually not burning as much as, as so we thought. So that, that might be a little bit more of a buyer's market there than Green say. Green County? Yeah, in Green County. What kind of price point? Uh, meaning is 205. 205, so that's that price point. That's that price point. And you yeah. like the, uh, what do you like? You like the buck 80 to three for the starter price point. Yeah, you know, the two to three. It's really hard to find something sub two. Especially single family detached. Single family detached, yeah. Nelson County, again, we talked about this yesterday when Jesse was on. A pretty interesting five went active, nine went pending, zero sold, so I can't tell you what, what that, but the, but the pending median sales price was 305. So that's that two to 300,000 single, fan. and these are all, you know, no new construction in it. So uh, it's, it's pretty interesting. Um, I think you're starting to see these micro markets um, trending a little differently. You know, if you look at it as a holistic thing, it's, it's, it's kind of, when you do the 25 mile radius, it kind of mishes every, everything together. When you break it down, it gets a, tells an interesting story. One of the micro markets where you're an absolute expert on is Lake Monticello. Well, um, you live there. I live there, but we're, we're experts on all, yeah, all, all, of, them, all yeah. of these. It's just, it's just that I kind of, the vision was Lake Monticello was going to be the path, I think, that folks would want to go. And you were right. Well, yeah, I I don't know if right, but I just got lucky. Well, I mean, if, if, if the, the person is looking to buy a home, there's few places they can do from a first-time home buyer standpoint because of price point. Correct. We also know with COVID, people are leaving dense environments Correct. because they want a little bit of backyard. Correct. So there's a lot of like factors okay. that are coming together at one time that are pushing the lake as a hot spot right now. So I think, uh, and this is just a snapshot, I think um, if I spend a little bit more time and take a look at trends, I think you'll see that trend been happening probably more than 12 to 24 months. It's where the price point is. It's, it's where the where, price point is. It's where the price point is. And, and it's what you get, right? You know, it's... Put it in perspective. What do you get? Well, so it's, what is it, um, $90 a month is the HOA? 80 yeah. It was 80 uh, Wasn't it? No, it's 90 Okay. So you're gonna look at my notes now. I right? do. Let's go through this. This is fantastic information here. Yeah. So again, this is something we'll get more into on Friday after Roy Wheeler does its uh, Facebook. But what I wanted to do is this is an actual transaction we're doing. So these are what they call itemized fee worksheets. Yeah. Uh, in back in the day, they used to call them good faith estimates from lenders. So this is um, a buyer. It's a two hundred thousand dollar purchase. At the lake. At the lake. Actually, it's 205 purchase, I apologize. At the lake, um, um, house is about 1,600 square feet, three bedrooms, one car garage. Uh, it's on a ranch. Walking distance to one of the beaches over there, easy in, easy out, a bunch of these different things. But, you know, and, and, and Roy Wheeler and Michael will talk about this on, on Thursday, and then we'll follow up on Friday here. Um, but at the, end, at the end of the day, between your principal and interest, your, your insurance... Your your uh, real estate taxes and your HOA fee, you pay. He's paying twelve hundred and eighteen dollars and nine cents a month. His monthly nut 
for 1,600 square feet, single family detached at the lake with a backyard and a place to raise your family. Walk, walking distance to a beach. Walking distance to a beach, yeah. easy in and out which of is, the lake. Which is important. Which is important, yeah, right, yeah. is $1,218 a month. Boys and girls, if you just use some common sense here, you have three bedrooms. Let's say those three bedrooms have a rental market value of maybe 500 a bedroom. You're probably paying from a, a rent standpoint, fifteen to sixteen hundred for something similar. The, the the distinguished gentleman over here says, "Why go fifteen or sixteen hundred a month for something like this when you can go one thousand two hundred and eighteen dollars? Probably lower your monthly payment by two hundred, maybe three hundred a month, even and then if, you build a savings account called home equity. Even if you're even." Right. Even if you're even, you get the value of the home equity and that's the tax. Exa that's exactly the right. tax so, advantages. So that's literally this, partic this particular uh, buyer happens to be a veteran, a fellow Marine. So he's doing a VA loan, and he's putting zero down. Not only are we putting zero down, we negotiated so the seller is paying the closing costs. He's literally walking into a home at 12, rounded down, $1,200 a month. 1200 a month. Zero. zero down. Zero down, zero cash out of his pocket. Zero cash out of his pocket. He's just walking right into the house. So if you were to rent a 1,200-square-foot home, you've got to write probably a $2,400 check. But, but he, I'm sure he's got conditions in this loan that it's got to be owner-occupied. Oh, right? yeah, 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 totally. He can't use that kind no, of no, loan no, 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 for no, investment. No, 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 no. This is purely owner-occupied. This is investment numbers are very... How do they enforce that, just out of curiosity? Well, they enforce it because people are doing what they're supposed to do. Okay, so it's honor code. Is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. You, you sign a document, and you know there's a document that you're not going to do this, so therefore you don't do it. There you go. There you go. There you go. Uh, Michael Guthrie says, we're going to be talking about this exact topic. Yep. Thank you for the plug. Yep. He's the CEO of Roy Wheeler Realty Company. A lot of folks watching at Ness Realty right now. Good. Thank you guys for joining us on the program. Michael Guthrie says, can you rent a house at the lake for 1200 to 1300 a month, Keith? Yeah, so they run between, uh, we looked at it before I came out this morning, anywhere between 1200 and 2000 It depends on where you're at, if you're on the sure. golf course or on the water. But, you know, typical rentals between twelve and $1,400 a month. And, oh, by the way, there's rental fees at the lake charges, which is on top of these numbers. And, again, in this particular case, um, this veteran is walking in with zero out of his pocket. Yeah, it's a slam dunk for him. Yeah. So interesting thing about Lake Monticello, which most folks may or may not know, but you actually can do – it's part of what they call a USDA of uh, rural loans. It's only two loans, and we're going to bring in uh, on Friday a loan officer to help us with this. Um, so there's only two loans really in today's world that you can get zero down. VA is one. The other one is these rural loans, these USDA roll loans. There may be a couple other ones out there that I'm not aware of. So, you know, this whole premise that I've got to save up 20% uh, is, is really not the case. Very rarely you see, particularly at the first time home buyer scenario, you see somebody bringing more than 3% down. Now, when you do some of the upper end stuff, when you start talking jumbo loans and stuff sure. like that. Or a commercial. Or a commercial. Yeah. You want to, particularly on the re residential side and the jumbo loans, you want to put cash down because you want to stay away from PMI. But PMI on this is so low. What is the PMI on that? Oh, it's, it's in here somewhere. You'd have to ask me that question. I'm just curious, too, because everyone's terrified of PMI because of what we've put, not us, but because of what people have put out there. I'd have to get back to you on that. It, it, it's it's rolled into the twelve hundred. I know that much. I'll but, see if I can find it. Yeah, it. You know, I'd have to call. I think being of uh, is this type of loan. Does this type of loan have PMI? It, uh, that may be the answer. Scott, that's a Scott Morris question. And Scott Morris is on the road to Tennessee because of uh, the, the bias, unique, the, the bias uniqueness bourbon. of the loan. No, I I think it's buried in here somewhere. But that's a great question. I do not have an answer to that. But I'll get it for you. You had an uh, uh, open house over the weekend, and in the process of having the open house with your boots on the street and everything else that's going on out there, you see the inventory popping up, you see the weather turning, you see the uh, real, real estate community really using virtual tours extremely well. Um, what, are, what are you feeling here? You're feeling pretty good. Yeah, you know, I feel I, feel, um, I need to go to uh, Riggleman's this weekend and just buy your bourbon and be done with it. Because, you know, I think the third quarter is uh, going to be a rock star quarter. I mean, we're seeing that with these particular numbers, you know. So it's the, the good news is where I think we're starting to get to a balanced market. 
That's great. Um, which is always healthy, in my opinion, uh, for everybody across the board. And uh, you know, I, I, you know, I, I, I think. I think these micro markets are, are going to, some are going to explode, some not. But, you know, everybody's talking about folks, you know, being dead in Charlottesville. And you've got pretty much a flat on and off, five on, six off. You know, that's a good market. And, you know, it's just a price point. It's about 375 is the medium sales price. And, you know, if you're looking for a, for a start a home or whatever you want to call it, I think looking at this, your green, really your Flavana green and Nelson is your best is your best bet what do you see with the uh we touched on this briefly um with dominion and the atlantic coast pipeline now kiboshed at least for a little bit we know warren buffett um purchased uh the pipeline the atlantic coast pipeline infrastructure for pennies on the dollar thanks to but it was a big number though it was still a big number yeah. he paid close to 10 billion yeah, sure. dollars but that was pennies on the dollar for what dominion has invested here i'll throw you some crazy stuff and then get out of your way Dominion has been working on the Atlantic Coast Pipeline through Nelson County, much of Virginia, West Virginia, and the Mid-Atlantic since 2014, yeah. so over six years. Dominion walked away from close to $3 billion and six years of sweat equity in this project. Well, they don't, Dominion doesn't think like your company or Mr. Wells' company, or what we do, or anybody's watching it, that's not a big number to them. Right, that's true. Right. That's true. You know, I think the opportunity cost to them is huge. That's what it is. Right. Yeah. You know, they wanted to cut their losses. They saw it was going to get worse. They saw it was going to get worse. They, they cut their opportunity costs. You know, the fact that fuel is relatively cheap compared to what it was... Ten months ago. Well, or... When I'm talking when it was four dollars a gallon right. kind of stuff. So, you know, I think they just look like an opportunity cost. I'll tell you I you know, we don't know what Mr. Buffett's intentions are, but nobody spends billions of dollars without having a plan. He has a plan. Yeah. I, well, it's not him, it's somebody halfway. Yeah, somebody in his organization has a plan. So, you know, Jesse said it. You you might be fighting this fight again with just a different person or a different entity. I don't know how that works. I don't know. You know, it'd be lo I would love to know what their intentions are, but they're clear clearly not going to. Yeah, they're not going to tip their hand. Does it impact the Nelson County real estate market in the short term until we see what Buffett's going to do? I think, I, think Nelson, I think the short answer to that is yes. I think it only helps these numbers that we've been, we've been looking at. Uh, but I think these numbers, regardless of the pipeline, were going that way, right? I think Nelson County, for the longest time, was just not really looked at very hard. And now it is, you know, you got fiber. Yeah, fiber internet. Right? It's making the world smaller. Right, you know, you got room, you've got reasonable taxes, you've got a government, local government that spends them well. Physically conservative. They, he, Jesse straight up said, yeah. we have enough money for 13 months right now in the Nelson County war chest. Yeah, they spend it well, right? Um, it's gorgeous country. Oh, it's God's country. And, and, you know, in a short ride, you can have a decent drink. Yeah, Blue Ridge Barrel House. Or Mr. Riggleman's yeah, Silverback. Yeah, in Afton, yeah. And that, or, or, or whatever. I mean, there's, there's all kinds of opportunities there. And, you know, and you could take a ride up to the top of Wintergreen Mountain and do a little skiing. And depending on where you are, you can be in downtown Charlottesville in 20 minutes, depending on where you, you are. it's a gold, little gold spot. Yeah, I mean, the numbers are showing it here, you know. Uh, it's, the, the, you know, when, when you've got five... And this is only since Friday. Five active and nine pendings. That, that means people are buying. That's true. The market's telling us something. Where's the market soft, Keith? <sighs> soft. That's a great question. Um, I think it's a price point thing. I don't think it's a, a, a location thing. Um, so I, I think certain price points, and, and I'm, you know, I haven't dug into them, so I'm not going to open foot insert mouth but clearly at at the medium price points activity is going to be very strong i think the higher price points that we go to um i think the market may be a little soft but we i can dig in some numbers and have that better information for yeah. you i just don't want to misquote a number sure sure um well i'm excited man you came in here you were feeling good um the open house went well you have two more open houses going we do we got uh, uh, one like i said at um 
at the Cascadia property, and then we're going to have another one out in Profit Ridge. So. Profit Ridge, Northern Almore County, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the personal residence of custom home builder John Kerber. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. So that's very exciting that's going on. How about the buzz you're hearing from other folks, other agents? Yeah, so I got a bunch of phone calls since Sunday. You know, how did it go? What did you do? Give me your protocols. Yeah, you, you know. were the third to have an open house since COVID, guys. The third one. Well, it's funny. I, uh, I probably... There's people watching, right? There's a lot of people watching, <laughs> okay. yeah. I focus so, laser focus so much on Sunday on getting the protocols right, getting the booties, the gloves, the masks, you know, the sanitizer, and getting all the, the infographic that we had and the sign-in sheets and all this stuff. I forgot to bring the MLS sheet on the house. <laughs> the you first were, person then asked me a question about the house, and I went, oh. They asked for the one sheet, or they had a question that was on the one well, sheet? They had a question yeah. that was on the one sheet. So the good news is I had it on yeah, my phone. Yeah, your phone, phone right, right. On my phone. But <laughs> That's because I, you care about people. Uh, yeah, no, I was so laser-focused on, on, on making sure we did this right and safe, and, and everybody who came through was super understanding. Uh, yes, great idea. Thank you. We had a questionnaire, you know, X questions. Have you ever had it? We tested. Have you been outside the country? These kind of things. Um, and we, we had them sign and, and put in their addresses and all that stuff. And, you know, not single person X, Y or pushed back. And they said, great idea, great idea, great idea. So it was, uh, was received well. So Our I'm buddy, Christopher Eagle, real estate three watching the show. Now, are we going to see the open houses? come back to market now? I think so. You do? I think so we're going to see the virtual open houses go back to the back burner and the in No, no, no. I don't think so. Okay, how is it going to play out? No, I, 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 think, I think you have to do almost what this is another trifecta term that I've been... This is almost been, a show topic. Yeah. A segment topic. Sure, sure. We, we could do that. Um, so I think we talked about this. It's going to be three things. It's You, you have to do your virtual... First, because it, the average is folks are looking at that three times before they want to go take a look at the house. Okay. The, the, the second thing is the open house. And the, and the third thing is networking with uh, fellow realtors, right? You know, those are the ones that have the buyers and the sellers and networking through, through, through different networks that we have available to us to say, hey, you know, I, we had it this morning. I, I had a couple of emails and a couple of texts for some... Some agents, hey, I'm bringing a house on in this area. I'm bringing a house on in this area. I just wanted to let you know, you know, we're going to be posting an MLS within the next 24, 48 hours. Um, if you got a client, let us know. So those are the three prongs that could go in there. But it it really needs to start with this virtual. I mean, the 80 some you know percent. This is where people find homes. So sure. it needs to start there, and then we move on from there. So you see virtual open house, in person open house with more serious potential buyers that saw the house virtually and then from there maybe it's the one-on-one -on -one walkthrough when it, the potential buyer and their representation in the home so it's an interesting thing uh, i didn't think about it until you just said it um every one of the 10 couples that came through they weren't just shopping or looking around to see what was on they're next level Though these were people that have either sold houses and are renting and trying to find a house to buy, or they are getting ready to put their house on the market and they're looking for their next move. So these weren't these weren't um, window shoppers. Yeah, mm -hmm. well, these were serious. Yeah, you know, they were ready to purchase, right? Uh, so that that was interesting. I never thought about that till you just said that. So it was interesting. Good, good turnout. We'll find out. We'll report more next Tuesday after, after Sunday and to see what we got to do. But, and, and we'll let Michael and Roy Wheeler do their thing. And then we're going to dig into it a little bit more deeper on Friday. Uh, I mean, folks, you know, there's, there's a absolute value to owning a home. And we're going to talk about that on, on Friday. I'm so excited guys. Uh, they have a fabulous listing in Cascadia. If you're looking to live within a hop, skip and a jump of the downtown mall, pretty much a hop, skip, a jump of anywhere because of the access to the bypass and the interstate. Cascadia and their listing is a dream home waiting for some family in this community. You, the YesTeamRealtors.com, the YesTeamRealtors.com. Guys, I've seen it. It is an incredible listing. My friend, what else are we missing from the notebook? The good, the good thing about the, the Cascadia thing, um, and, and I, I did it the other day, you can hop on your bike. You did the trail. Oh, I, you did the Rivana Trail? I did. Good for you. I did. Look so at you, distinguished gentleman. Yeah, hopped on my bike. You're riding the bike outside Lake Monticello now. I, I am. I am. Don't tell my wife. How did you get it? You took it on the truck? 
Yeah, I have a rack on the back oh, of my you truck. Put on the rack? Oh, yeah, 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 on the back of the truck. I've and never done that. Put the rack on the no, back of the truck? No, the RT on a bike. Yeah. Isn't that, well, I've done it on the south side. I haven't done it by Freebridge. Tell me about that. Yeah, so, so there's two versions of it, right? There's the paved version, which is I'm on a road bike, so that's the one I took. And then the other side is for mountain bikes. Literally, you just come down uh, out of Cascadia. You cross the light across where um, Darden Tower is. Okay. Go all the way back to Darden Town Park, catch the paved path. Uh -huh. You just got to go across um, free, top of Free Bridge, come back on the other side, and then you go up East High Street. There's a path that goes all the way, and it ends at the Riverview Park. Right, then you shoot up to downtown mall, and the next thing you know, you're a champion brewery having a beer. Nice. Not that I did that. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You could do that. You did do that. Uh, yeah. It's so it's. Uh, four, Sounds like a good ride. It's four miles. You have a beer. You put your you put your Apple Watch on pause. Yeah, <laughs> and you go back. And then you go back. Yeah, <laughs> and that's it. it that's was, awesome. It was, that is such a perk of that side of pretty much anywhere. I mean, the Rivana Trail does the whole... It's 20-some-odd miles. It's impressive. Yeah. But the other thing about this property is, is you know, and, 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 and you know, we tell people all the time, if you're looking into a neighborhood, get on, get on the ground. Walk. Sure. Bike. You know, the, when you drive, you kind of miss stuff. But um, it's right next to Darden Town Park. Right. I know. I mean, as yeah. a family, sure. to have that there... Sure. Oh, and my then, goodness. And then for us coffee nuts... You have grit. You got grit. Yeah. And we love coffee. A little bit. Sure, sure. So speaking of which, I was in Marie Beth today. Tell me about that experience. I was so freaking happy yeah. that I was late for the show. There was a line out the door. And this is to Mr. Wells's point where he's like, we want the local business community yeah. to come back. Yeah, I was, I mean, I, I had a conversation with Jason last week, the owner, one of the owners. One of the owners, of, Jason Patrick. Yeah, Jason. Um, and, uh, you know, thank God, thank, knock on fake Ikea. Ikea. <laughs> on fake, fake, fake wood. Fake wood, Ikea. Oh, God, we're finishing each other's sentences. I know. Um, yeah, it, 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 business as well. Good. The business is doing good with them, so please support them. And they they need they need it. But I, I was a couple minutes late because I had to wait for my coffee. I mean, that place is just a gem. Uh, I got to go pick up my bread after this. Um, guys, the show is powered and presented by the Yes Team Realtors. We also want to thank Interstate Pest and Service Companies, mm -hmm. Scott Morris, yeah. Dairy Market, Pearl Certification, and Roy Wheeler for being a part of this program. It airs Tuesdays and Fridays at 1015 on the I Love Seville Network. I believe we have a video. We do, I do, but it's probably next Tuesday we're going to do a, a, I want to do a kind of a, a if we can do this, a round robin of the different, um, call in the different sponsors and catch idea. up on Pearl. And we haven't done that in a while. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Judah Wickhauer, our director, the video, you have that ready to go, my friend? All right, guys. Keith Smith, Yona Smith, trusted advisors in the game. I've seen it firsthand, just like I've seen with Interstate. People that care about others first before themselves. That goes a long way for me. The Yes Team Realtors. Judah Wickhauer, if you could, that video in three, two, one.